evening. Welcome. We're going to call to order the regular meeting for the Akron Public Schools Board of Education for July 23rd, 2018. Roll call, please. Mr. Alexander. Present. Mrs. Malin. Here. Mr. Bravo. Here. Mrs. Blasher. Here. Mrs. Mansfield. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Forever Walker. Present. Joining us for the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, are our NJR OTC cadets, uh, led by Petty Officer Grupo. So we will turn it over to them if everyone can please stand for the presentation of the colors. professionalism and poise come in and present the colors to us so thanks for them to them for doing that uh, for us over the summer I uh, just want to point out one of our colleagues in the audience or former colleagues and colleague on the Akron City Council Ms. Veronica said thank you for joining us this evening Always great to see a familiar face, too. No booing or anything like that. <laughs> Rock is cheering. Right. Uh, community and school reflections. Would anyone like to start? I'd just like to say uh, the superintendent um, and um, <laughs> Mr. Black. Um, yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really forget your name all the time. So. But uh, a number of us went to uh, the ribbon cutting for the Boss Park where the AAA students had cleaned up the park and revitalized it. It was very awesome. I also went to, and a number of us went to uh, the presentation. So they had a number of presentations in different rooms, and I was able to hit each and every one and give them audience and feedback on the presentations and encourage them to continue the good work because that's they've come halfway. Research is pretty much your senior year, you know, your senior high school and then also college. So they did a good job and, it, and there was a difference in each and every presentation. It was their own group's flavor and it was, it was tremendous. So thank you to those students, Chipotle. 
I have one. I uh, just want to just kind of say congratulations to one of our students. I uh, just happened to pick up the paper yesterday at, at church and saw this here. But Kofi B. B. Boy Aiki, Boy Aiki, I'm always pronouncing this, but Boy Ach. Okay, Boache. I'm sorry, I'm always pronouncing his name wrong. Uh, but he was uh, an ACTSO uh, winner, and that stands for uh, Afro, Afro Academic Cultural Technology and Scientific Olympics. And he competed in San Antonio, Texas, and he was the only Ohioan that got a, uh, an award. He got a silver medal, and I thought this would be nice to just. Uh, state that he has, has done really well and he continues to do well. It's, he's also in his third year of Akron University. He just graduated from uh, uh, our Akron Early College and he's on his third year already. He'll be graduating in 2019 with his bachelor's and then going on to uh, work on his master's at Berkeley College of Music in Boston. So I just want to give him a shout out to he, you know, for, for being an outstanding student and being one of our Akron Public School students. Thank you. Thank you. So one of the meetings that I missed recently was um, in June, I got to attend the, uh, the Jimmy Awards, which is the National Musical Theater Awards. I just wanted to point out that a recent graduate, uh, I went to watch a recent graduate, Raina Moran, and um, though she didn't make the finals, she did an excellent job. Uh, another Northeast Ohioan did make the finals. He was from Solon High School, and he did quite a lovely job also, but, um, this is the third year running that uh, the Playhouse Square winner has been from Firestone High School, and um, it's the third year of them participating. So um, it's pretty amazing, and to have us be on the national stage. It was on Broadway. It was in the, um, oh gosh, I can't remember which theater. The same theater they do The Lion King. Uh, and it was completely sold out, and um, she represented our district well. So not only are we represented on a state, but like uh, Kofi, we're representing on a national stage. And it's, it's high time that we definitely toot that horn because we're doing amazing things nationally. Glad you had somebody there. Yeah, yeah. that's great. There were several of us there. So. couple things briefly. I uh, did want to say I went to the Project Learn graduation uh, in the last couple of weeks and there were uh, I think four or five um, I Promise Two parents who graduated with their GED that evening so uh, they're not necessarily Akron Public School graduates but their children are in the Akron mm -hmm. Public School so I want to say uh, congratulations to them. Uh, attended the Akron Roundtable, and they had the new president publisher of the Beacon Journal there, and the president and publisher of, uh, of Dispatch News, which I believe is a Columbus paper. But uh, one thing that stood out to me over everything else that was said there, uh, somebody was asking about fake news, and uh, I think it was the publisher of the Akron Beacon Journal made the <laughs> statement, which I'm going to keep in mind and use it as a filter myself, that uh, if you read something, and it doesn't have the author's name, a phone number, and or an email address to contact them, you've got to think about the credibility of what you're reading. You should be able to contact the author. I thought that was uh, very insightful. Um, and uh, lastly, I, I did want to share, uh, we had our uh, Board of Education at City Council joint meeting, and uh, I don't think I shared with everybody else at the table, but uh, if you're interested in looking at the website that the Hack in Akron put together, that website address is neighborhoods.hack, the letter N, akron.org. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in taking a look at what they put together and how we might be able to utilize that, uh, ideas are welcome on that. Thank you. Can you give that one more time? Yes. Neighborhoods.hack, the letter N, Akron, so hackandakron.org. Yeah. I just have a couple of quick things. Um, Athena, our uh, women's group in Akron, had their state of the community that they do once a year. Um, Anna Shapiro was our host, and two of the panelists were from Akron Public. So, major thanks to Mrs. Tekka and Mrs. Zappatelli. Um, represented APS extremely well, got tons of great feedback and comments afterwards, and talked about all of the amazing things that are happening in the district. And it was very clear that the state of our community is strong. And I think Eileen Shapiro said that as well. 
Um, and also just Akron Community Foundation, they have their 63rd annual meeting and have had record breaking years again. Just want to highlight uh, this last weekend was the uh, annual Teodosio 3K that I participated in, and it's always a time to recognize uh, the work uh, that both judges do uh, to honor uh, their daughter who died tragically, but how the community comes together, and over 350 persons were involved in that activity. And then the other, um, the black elected officials under the leadership, and she's here today, Veronica Sims, uh, we met and we wanted to highlight our children, uh, particularly this past couple of weeks. We've seen violence, we've seen vandalism, we've seen one of our outstanding sculptures, Woodrow Nass property being vandalized by you know, some of our children who put themselves on uh, YouTube. And uh, we're reminded that we need to, as leaders, as people in the community, when we see our children not doing things that are uh, in the positive manner, to somehow gather them so that we can uh, have that as a teachable moment on how they will be able to do things in a positive way, especially when younger children are killed and they want to express themselves, they want to vent. Uh, sometimes their actions are not the most appropriate way to do that. So we took a moment amongst ourselves trying to figure out how to handle those things, how to put that out there so that we are aware of that, concerned about those things. And so we want to thank her as she leaves her leadership in that, uh, that uh, area, bring us together to tackle those very difficult issues, which goes along with what we're doing with uh, the committee and the leadership of uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Miller, because all that ties in. We've talked about uh, the home, the place of origin, and how that plays in the community, mm -hmm. how that plays into the lives uh, of our children and how they interact and how they uh, do positive and negative things based on their experiences. So all of that, I think, sort of ties in with what we're trying to do in our portrait of a graduate. One more quick thing. I forgot to mention the College and Career Academy Steering Committee met, and I just give a huge um, shout out to the members of the community who gave up a whole day. It was a retreat. It was a um, eight to uh, mm. four, eight to three, four, I think. Um, I got to stop in for about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, I missed the superintendent, and I got to see Dr. McWilliams Woods and sit in on a few sessions and, um, and talk to a few folks at lunch. But just, you know, it, it is a sacrifice often for our business leaders, and there were quite a few community members there that gave up their whole day. There were them. How many there were? I don't think it was quite that many. But, yeah. Like but it was it was quite a, a large group that got together and they worked during the day. Yeah. Said report by No, that's great. <laughs> All right. If there's nothing else, um, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in. I don't have much of a report tonight. We're going to try and streamline. So we've got a few things on the agenda. Um, but I'm glad that you brought that up, Reverend Walker, about the discussion on uh, youth violence in our community. And I know that um, I was uh, also talking with uh, Council uh, President Margo Somerville about this. And, I, and we talked about this at our joint meeting, that it needs to be a discussion at our follow-up in November. And so I think that we put that on plate. Um, these are our kids, their kids. It's, it's all of our kids. And I, and you, and I can't say it any better than you did. Um, so I think it's a conversation that we need to dive a little bit deeper into. Um, to that end, we did have conversations about uh, starting to pick out dates for our follow-up meeting. Our, our most recent meeting uh, was just last Thursday on July 19th, uh, where we get together with Akron City Council. Um, I think we've been trying to do it for the last several years, three or four years, uh, twice a year, uh, just to talk about uh, talk to each other about things that we're working on and bring up questions and issues and give us a, a platform and a place uh, to speak about questions or concerns that we have as a community 
uh, both from city council side and from the school board side. And this certainly came up as an issue, but because we had already planned the agenda, we didn't um, add it to this meeting, but I, we did talk about adding it to the next one, so I think that's good. And we are looking at two dates in November. All of you have the ones that we kind of uh, uh, threw out of the meeting. Now we just need to follow up and check calendars because we have OSBA and some other things going on. So we'll check those and get back to you with the one that looks the best. Um, we have tonight, of course, the evaluations for the superintendent and treasurer that we will, uh, which is one of the reasons why we're kind of keeping our comments short. Uh, next week we have forward, uh, we get to look forward to that promise dedication. So that's really exciting. Uh, we talked about that just a few minutes this morning in scrimmage, so I know details will be coming out to everyone um, as far as uh, the, the program for that. Um, we have no requests to address the board. We have no communications and recognitions unless you want to give them the gentleman now or there. Superintendent's right. report. Um, so with that, we have approval of the meeting minutes, uh, the regular meeting for July 9, 2018. We have a motion. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second on the meeting minutes. Any questions, comments, discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. yes. Trevor Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. <coughs> Superintendent's recommendations. Mr. President, I have before me for your consideration 40 personnel recommendations and one item on the personnel recommendation supplement. And before moving to approval, I have Kathy McVeigh who's going to introduce uh, some administrative changes. Okay, several introductions this evening. Todd, Kathy, so please stand. Um, Todd is a proud Bulldog graduate of Stone High School. He attended Kent State University where he earned his Bachelor of Business Administration degree with a major in accounting in 1995. In September 95, he joined Forest Technology where he worked as a staff accountant. His many duties included preparing monthly reconciliations for all bank accounts. He later joined the firm of Gary B. Fink and Associates in 1996 to work as a senior accountant. He was responsible for supervising, training, and evaluating staff members and participated in the hiring of new staff for the company. He remained at this firm for six years and then made the career to move to move to move to Akron Public Schools in 2002. He was initially hired to be an internal auditor in the treasurer's office and provided training sessions for employees who collected money to make sure all knew the correct procedures to follow. He prepared audits for building principals and building treasurers in order to improve the controls and procedures of student activities in all of the schools. In 2004, he became the accounts payable supervisor and oversaw the staff in this department as well as approved all the purchases for the district. In 2015, he obtained his treasurer's license and became the budget supervisor for the district in 2017. His understanding of the responsibilities and duties associated with the treasurer's office of Admin Schools makes him most qualified tonight to be recommended for the assistant treasurer position. Congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to thank the board, the superintendent, treasurer for this opportunity, and my family, my wife, darling, my daughter, Julia. But um, I've been here 16 years, had four different positions already, and I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. I really enjoyed working here. It's one of the best things that ever happened to me. I can say that. And I really, really look forward to future opportunities. Thank you. Wayne, right, you can stand. You're up next. Wayne is a graduate of Stowe Monroe Falls High School, and following his graduation from high school, he attended Kent State University, where he earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in Business Management, majoring in Accounting. He's also a graduate of the Ohio Association of School Business Officials Leadership Academy. Following his graduation from Kent in 1995, he began working as an auditor for the state of Ohio. From 2002 through 2010, he worked for the Twinsburg City School District as an accountant. In 2010, he began working for the Portage Lakes Career Center as an assistant treasurer. During his employment there, the district was awarded the Auditor of State Making Your Tax Dollars Count Award. Two years later, in 2012, he went to work for the Northeast Ohio Network for Educational Technology, also known as Neonet, at their, as their fiscal officer. He was responsible for supervising four fiscal support specialists and two fiscal consultants. He provided accounting and payroll software support to more than 40 area school districts. He was also responsible for the preparation of the Board of Directors Financial Report, quarterly cash statements, and evaluation of fiscal software. 
He joined Akron Public Schools in 2016 when he accepted the position of finance controller in the treasurer's office. Tonight, he's being recommended as an assistant treasurer for the treasurer's office. Congratulations. Thank you. Just you read all that. It sounds like I'm a lot older than <laughs> um, I'd like to like to thank the superintendent treasurer and the board for this opportunity. I've only been here just a little over two years, but it's been a great experience and we've got a great team downstairs to work with and now listening to your guys, you, you've been to school together that thinking. whole time. We did. We did. Did you ever think you'd end up? <laughs> we really didn't know each other. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we were the same. We were the same place in college. Yeah. And we didn't even. We were both at the County <laughs> Association of Kent State. And wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so good. We had five hundred six or something. Yeah, people in our class. So, and you were years ahead of me. So, yeah. So he is. 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 So he
Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mrs. Blasher? Yes. Next, Mr. President, I have before me for your consideration four resolutions on the consent agenda. These recommendations on proper form and I move their approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on the consent agenda. Any comments, questions, or discussion? Just wanted to say um, we did go over in item three um, with really great detail from Mr. Black and our. Um, uh, instructional policy committee uh, on what those uh, GAR funds are going to be going towards. So if anyone has any questions about that, feel free to ask us. But a, a great thanks for those grants from GAR. Yeah, and I actually asked about those in, uh, earlier today. Um, and so we may look at having them come in and present after they've done that. Oh, uh, great. That would be wonderful. So they can what they were. They're the Act Educator Initiative. So, yeah. Any other comments, questions, or discussions on the consent agenda? Uh, I'd also no, like to say goodbye to Harris Elementary School as I went there. <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother went there. My, so uh, I'm slightly emotional as we make that <laughs> swap. Your family has a legacy there, too. Uh, my husband and my grandmother. I, I'm slightly emotional today. I mean, for heaven's sake. Hey. <laughs> R&R does. That's right. It brings you back fresh and mm -hmm. excited. <laughs> Anything? All right. Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Miller? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Hansfield? Yes. And finally, Mr. President, I have before me for your consideration 20 business affairs <coughs> recommendations. These recommendations are in proper form, and I move their approval. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion. Second on the business <laughs> affairs recommendations. Any comments, questions, or discussion? Sorry. Um, <laughs> on item 10, uh, we requested a little bit of extra information. Actually, Mr. Black gave mm -hmm. a lot of extra information. So I'm going to pass these around for you all to see um, an overview of. Uh, the uh, PSAT test and what that's going to provide. Um, just real quick, this will be given on October 2nd to grades 8 and 9, and I believe we're also going to be testing um, for ACT on those days for the higher grades. Um, but uh, there's lots of reasons that this is important. It helps the students develop study plans through Khan Academy after they have their results. It also gives students practice at taking the test. So when they do go then to take an SAT or an ACT, they're, they're much better prepared. So um, if you want any further information, this was very thorough for Mr. Black. So I'm thinking about that as well. There you go. What's that? Giving everything else in here. I don't know. Name that? I'm going that one. So we have a motion and a second. Oh, yeah. Oh, that? Yeah, we can talk about that too. Andrew, do you want to talk about item 20? That's the Bridgestone. Oh, the Bridgestone. Um, I don't know. Are we. In order to do that, yeah, we didn't. We didn't. We weren't we sure if we were. We yeah, it, yeah. So I don't want to get into that. Yeah, you can talk about it. Yeah, you can. Talk about it? I mean, you know, you've reviewed a draft of a sponsorship agreement between uh, Akron Public Schools and Bridgestone Retail Operations LLC. So the plan is for Bridgestone to create a Bridgestone Complete Auto Care Center at East uh, CLC in our automotive program. So the students who are in the automotive program will get some experience uh, working uh, actually at school with a Bridgestone Auto Center because they have a huge demand for auto technicians, not just here locally, but nationwide. So earlier in the year, we had folks from Bridgestone Tour East, and they were very interested in um, partnering with us on this project. And then, we'll, yeah. and then we'll get a chance to, to thank those folks. When yes, we do at a later cutting. date, yes, when we do the ribbon cutting. Uh, yeah, we, it was also mentioned it would be a good idea if representatives from most of those partners could appear here so everyone would have access to hearing everything that's rolling out and to 
you know, engage in questions and answers. So. That's very exciting. That's very exciting. All right. We have a motion and a second on the business affairs organization. Any other comments, questions, or discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Superintendent's report? Um, last week, we received a um, <laughs> citation from a ward from the Ohio Senate, um, thanks to Senator Vernon Sykes. Um, regarding um, us getting a grant from the Akron Community Foundation. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, basically, it, the citation says, this prestigious distinction is a fitting tribute to Akron Public Schools for it's achieved a remarkable record of service to the area. Its numerous accompli accomplishments are just are a justifiable source of pride and an outstanding reflection not only on the district itself, but also on its faculty, staff, students, and alumni, and on the community. Since its inception, Akron Public Schools has enhanced the quality of life within the surrounding area, and its tremendous contributions have earned if the respect and gratitude of many, we are certain that this uh, is a uh, noteworthy district maintains its unfaltering dedication to service that will continue in the tradition of excellence that has become its hallmark. We congratulate Akron Public Schools for exemplary attainment and wish it ongoing success. So that was from uh, signed by Senator uh, Larry Oppo, President of the Senate, and Senator Vernon Sykes. My report, treasurer's report, quick update tonight. Um, you have two financial reports that you see today. The first is for the month ending in June. This wraps up the fiscal year, kind of puts closure to it. The second or supplement report, which has some new formats to it, was a chance to do more budget versus actual. So take a look at those charts. Uh, it's also it also highlights where we were in May with the forecast and where we closed. And so you'll see on the first page, there's about $4 million difference. And then it details through the rest of the report what facilitated those changes, right? So whether it was salaries or benefits or supplies or materials, and it tells you why. Like, I think we've all talked from finance committee to the forecast and presentations. <coughs> We want to tell the public in this board more uh, about why we don't hit the targets for estimates from 12 months ago. We want to talk about why we did um, And they're all for great reasons. They're for decisions that we all make, for assumptions on health care that we were frankly wrong on for health care assumptions, but in a positive way, right? So lessening that cost. So take a look at that. We'll review this in further detail at the Finance Committee, and you can kind of determine whether or not these are items you want to see in the future. That concludes my report. Committee reports to equal contracts and board policy. Um, so we met last week, and we have several policies that are up for second reading tonight, um, including some that we would like to have a quick discussion about with our board. Um, so we can run through and just name the ones that we're going to be doing a second reading for. And we also have a brief summary. Thank you very much to Ms. Porter and your office for helping us do that. So it's also a quick summary of why we're making the change and when the last change to the policy actually happened. All right, so for second reading tonight, we've got revised policy 2260, non-discrimination and access to equal educational opportunity. Um, policy, revised policy rather, 2464, gifted education and identification. A brand new policy, 6605, about crowdfunding. New policy, 8300, continuity of organizational operation plans. And new policy, 8305, information security. Um, so we can briefly give you a quick overview of each of those policies and kind of why we're making the specific or why we're requesting the specific changes. But maybe first we could start with crowdfunding. 
because that's the one that we wanted to have a brief discussion about. Um, and I think we've learned a lot in the last week or so since we've met. Um, at first, we were basically looking at two options. One, do we just not allow crowdfunding for our employees? Or two, do we allow it, but do we structure it in a way? And um, Mr. Pendleton knows a little bit more about this than I do. So if you want to talk through um, some of what we've been talking about as well, and also a platform called Donors Choose, Donor Choose? Donors Choose. Donors Choose, Choose. That, or that is specifically for teachers and schools. Mm -hmm. So probably this started, the conversation with this um, across the state started with an auditor state uh, bulletin and then subsequent report about crowdfunding. And it was the do's and don'ts about crowdfunding. What crowdfunding is, is uh, electronic means for teachers and staff members to fundraise. And the, they originated about four or five years ago is uh, when they really came into Akron Public Schools. The first ones were the ones we had the most difficulty with. Uh, it would have the teacher, administrator, school employee give their own personal bank account information, mm -hmm. set up a revolving fund that they would collect information. They would take the deposit and then turn over a donation to the school. That violated board policy, that violated state law, divided deposit, violated depository records, those kind of things. Because we're so large, we, we've had lots of experience with crowdfunding, frankly. And we have aligned to one or more, specifically DonorsChoose.org. Uh, we have great writers on staff. We work with staff in a proactive way, right? So sometimes government spending gets um, thought of as not very efficient or friendly, right? So actually, those platforms, electronic means, when they're supported by board policy and state law, they're great ways for us to raise funds in the community, provided that we're not canvassing the community too much, provided they follow board policy and state law, and they follow our depository record. So that's why we mentioned the DonorsChoose.org, because what, what they do, they're a nonprofit that exists where they work with staff uh, our current board policy is that the billing principal is the one that reviews. If they have any questions, they have um, options to go above them or to our office, get a little bit more background. So we're sponsoring it. There's obviously FERPA issues and those kind of things because sometimes we want to post pictures. So those are all covered currently by board policy. Then we go out and fundraise. So with donors choose, the way that works is um, there's commitments that you and I make. I'm participating one um, for a special education class that wants to just, for example, they want a recumbent bicycle. It's something that typically may not be purchased through federal funds or local tax dollars. Once they meet their target, donors chooses, donors choose, goes out and purchases the equipment and then makes the donation back to the school board. That's the most efficient means. They work with different vendors and then we accept that donation. And those are those are all current policies that we follow. Now crowdfunding is, it is a new language out there. It's a new buzz word. And there are not specific crowdfunding policies. Our tendency as our financial people is to say no, just don't do it. That's the most you know, risk averse way of doing it but there are good ones out there. So I would encourage the board as you think about this, that we probably do want to mention something in our board policy about crowdfunding. So we're specifically targeting what the auditor state wants us to look at. That's, I think that's a great way of raising the expectation and education back to our buildings, right? So when we talk about it, they'll hear about it, uh, and then we can apply it to our current board policy. This, this was a policy as well that when we were looking at it, we wanted to make sure that uh, we were all covered in references, but we wanted to make sure too that teachers were covered, there would be any issues or problems for teachers, so they would be protected. Um, we wanted to make sure that the students were getting what they need in the classroom as well, because you don't want to prevent that from happening. So I think with this, this donor, uh, donor's choice, it might be a little better for us, because you don't want uh, something minor to come up and then the teacher be accused of something, because a couple pennies may be off or here or there. So it take, kind of takes some of that out of their hands so they don't have to worry about handling any funding and uh, it protects them as well as uh, everyone else. So 
that was one of the reasons why we wanted to have a little bit more discussion on this because there were just two options and uh, the two options we were wanted to talk a little bit more about. I wanted to share with all the board and get your input as well and then we were going to, to talk about it. And if we needed more time uh, uh, to vote on this, you know, we would table it and we'd come back and bring it if we need to. I had asked a few questions about this because when I worked in worked for a nonprofit, it's people like to give to things, right? They like something they can put their hands on. People don't like to give money necessarily to keep the lights on, but if they can get a bike, if they can buy a sound system, if they can buy microphones, they like they like to feel that. They like to see something they can put their hands on and name. So I, I hate to have it throw the baby out with bathwater as far as an absolute no. But there are also some things where I've you know, contacted the superintendent or Mr. Williamson when I see posts that say, the Akron Board of Education won't give us the money for this, so let's raise the money this way, right? So as a board, you know, okay, part of that could be true. There could be a reason we can't give money for a certain thing. There, so I think we have to be careful with how our staff is um, is wording this. So maybe this gives us just a little bit more control that way because just having people out there saying, well, they won't give it to us, so we have to raise the money separate is just, it's it's an unfortunate message mm -hmm. to have out there. Uh, and often it's a half truth or not a complete truth. So um, I'm glad to see we're looking at this and, and uh, hopefully we can stop this. And that's also the way that the other world, you know, through the internet, you're making donations and doing things. People rather do that than go into an actual physical building and give it a check or something like that. So it tends to have better success rates. But just like you said, the language has to be right, it has to be in compliance with the policy and the state and all those mandates. But yeah. A couple things come to mind. When I, when I first read it, I see we have option one with an X. So we're actually looking at just say no. We're not, not And allowed. that was actually the, one of the original conversations that we had in our first reading of it. And after learning more this week, we would like to not recommend option one and instead recommend option two, okay. where so, we could still use platforms like Donors Choose. Okay, so, mm. and, okay, yeah, so I think that clarifying clarified. That. So yeah. Donors Choose is still considered crowdfunding. Right. Yes. We're not saying no yeah. to this because we're going to use right. something like Donors Choose, which is okay. better, yeah. better uh, choice. Okay. And even though we're using Donors Choose a lot in this example, it does not limit our employees to only use that platform, for instance. It's just the one right now that we have As training an example. for. Right. Okay. Uh, now, how, how does this affect our... Uh, we, just had, we just had a discussion, have a policy on... I don't know, had a discussion on making sure that anybody who's doing business with us, such as our PPAs and things of that nature, they're separate entities, right. but we still have to have an agreement with them and sort of license them. I don't know if that's the right wording or not. That's a good way to say that. How, how does that affect them? Do they still have to adhere to this policy, or could they use a GoFundMe since they're not, they are an actual separate right. tax entity? So that's a really good question. We do not govern or have authority over PTAs or booster organizations, the Ohio Attorney General's office does. However, uh, as you said, we were re reviewing policies, and I would call it more of like an educational guide for how to interact with the Board of Education, Akron Public Schools, and a PTA or booster organization. So let's help them set them up. But to do so and to be recognized by Akron Public School is where I think we want to take the policy. I don't think we need to get a specific on our side of the house with option two about excluding certain vendors. I think we can do that through administrative guidelines. So if there is a GoFundMe account, and we're, we're picking on GoFundMe accounts because the only way to do that is for the individual to use their own personal bank account that violates Ohio law, board policy, depository records right off the bat. Now, that doesn't mean that Akron Public Schools someday, if there's tax-exempt status and those kind of things, that we might use that platform if it's our endorsement our site. On the PTA and booster side, the equation, I think we should provide those educational manuals, but not be so exclusionary that they can't use that. So PTA boosters are 501c3s. They're established. They're part of our policy. We acknowledge them. 
or maybe they set up the GoFundMe account through them. That's absolutely acceptable. That's acceptable in the state's eyes, our board policy, we would then in turn accept those donations. Have we got to the point of, you know, whatever the, whatever the policy is, if somebody violates this, what's the teeth? I mean, what, is there a, you know, consequence for violating this policy? For the depository, um, in Ohio law, there are serious consequences. And we're doing this, I believe, as a service to a lot of our staff, instructional staff, support staff, because their license could be in jeopardy. Uh, if there's ever missing funds, there's what's called finding for recovery, that's an audit citation. And that audit citation is issued to the individual who's responsible for that account and the treasurer, because the treasurer carries a bond on your behalf. And then if it exceeds, there's been a few cases, unfortunately, so that's why we know so much about this right now. There's been a few cases where the treasurer's bond on behalf of the board doesn't cover it. Then they tre the treasurer of the board is personally liable. So there's very, very large risk at stake. Most importantly would be any instructional staff that has a license from ODE we want to protect. Right? And so that's why it's mean educational guidance. So work with the instructional staff, with building meetings, cluster meetings, when we adopt this policy, there's always good reason to reach out to staff and say, hey, pay attention to this. We'll help you get it set up, but let's do it the right way. I, I think you can't say that loud enough to people who hold a license then. Mm -hmm. you yes. know, let, let the state be the bad guy. You can lose your livelihood by trying to raise money for yeah. whatever. Right? Again, as the, this was the reason we talked more about it, because we want to make sure our staff is protected and safe. We want to make sure the treasure is safe, everyone's safe, so that we don't have any problems with the state comes in and say, hey, you have a violation, and someone possibly lose their license, and you know we get dinged, so <clears throat> we don't want that. So that was, uh, we had probably more discussion on this policy than we did on the others, which uh, I thought was warranted at the time. Well, also being sure that our educators have as much opportunity as possible to get things they need for their classroom. Right. Well, thanks to <clears throat> legal and board policy for bringing it um, to the board for discussion. Um, I mean, my thoughts when I was looking at it was just that I think it's a good balance. Um, and we talked about this earlier. So, and, and kudos to the treasurer and to the superintendent for saying, you know, I know they both talked back and forth about this as well and um, what it means. But um, I think it's a good balance between sort of applauding uh, the auditor of state's focus in an area that has such big implications for our schools and our staff and the people that are raising the money and buying the bikes or doing, you know, whatever they're doing. Um, but also recognizing, as Ms. Baylor said, and I think Ms. Mansfield was alluding to it, you know, it's kind of also the 21st century and we need to provide all the tools that, you know, our folks need to, to be able to do their jobs and feel like they're doing uh, what they can for their students. So it was a good discussion. You will have, you'll actually take this back to committee and then you'll come back for the third and final reading. Um, yeah, we're proposing we'll, options. For yeah, we'll make sure we get all the information to you guys so you have plenty of time to look over it and maybe before we come and make that final vote. Uh, uh, and before the third reading, too, um, it might make sense for us just to send out the quick summaries that just tell you when it was last updated and what the point of the update was. That's good. Thank you. My name is Capital Man. No, we instructional policy and student achievement. We did our thing already. I actually had another question on one of the other um, policies. <laughs> <laughs> I just on on the information security uh, policy. Um, I'm just curious if it, have, have we done as a business a, a, a look at the financial impact if we had a data breach as far as our requirements for reporting to people whose data may have been compromised that's in our possession. A financial impact study is your yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, you, there's notification requirements which cost a probably business of this size could be in millions. Sure. Uh, and I don't know if that's part of this discussion or not, but I, I know there's insurance products on the market for those, and you can self-insure those, obviously. I don't know if you've had a, um, 
you know, discussion with our insurance consultants or not, but if not, it's probably a good idea to so follow up. Thank you. Any unfinished business? Any new business? If not, then pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22 G1 uh, to consider evaluations, employment, compensation of a public employer official of the school district. And revised code section 121.22 G3 to discuss disputes involving the board and or the school district for the subject of any or any court action. We're looking for a motion for to recess into executive session. Cool. Second. We have a motion and a second for recess into executive session. Any comments, questions, discussion? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mrs. Mainsfield? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Forever Walker? Yes. Thank you.